Um, okay, well, um, welcome everyone. We'll probably have more people um, uh, jumping in here too, and also some people catch us on the recording too. So um, if you're joining live or seeing this later, welcome. I'm Andy Harwood. Um, I am the co-owner of the Vaz Harwood team. And I'm here with um, Nora, who's our director of operations. Hi, Nora. Uh, and our special guest, uh, Danella Thompson. Uh, so this Hi. is Vaz Harwood Academy class, and uh, we do these uh, periodically, uh, class session, mastermind, whatever you want to call it. Um, but we love to have people on who are doing interesting things in real estate uh, and that we can learn from. Uh, and we came to know Danella um, through a transaction for a buyer of ours. And she had the listing um, and, you know, she's doing a lot of business. And I remember when I got started, Sherilyn and I got started in real estate, um, just how hard it was to get going. And I know, I think you've been doing this only like a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, My was just last week. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And uh, when I realized how much uh, Danella is is selling, I was I was blown away. I was like, wow. Um, and I just um, I wanted to ask you, you know, how you're doing it and just kind of like how you're finding clients, how you got started, all of this kind of stuff. So I thought we would uh, love to have you on and see if, um, you know, anyone else can benefit from what what uh, amazing skills you have and you're starting the business. Do you, do you want to like um, introduce yourself a bit and talk us through just how you got started in real estate and background and how you how you came to this crazy profession? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, and you guys can hear me OK. Yeah, perfect. OK, um, perfect. so my was actually in real estate growing up, so I've always been around it my entire life. But you know, when you're younger, especially you're a teen, you're kind of just doing your own thing, not paying too much attention, but I always kind of had my eye on it. So it was something I've always been intrigued with. Um, we grew up in a house that my mother owned. Um, so when I, after high school started renting, I just hated it. I hated renting. I always had a crazy neighbor or a crazy property <laughs> or just, it was something that I didn't like. So early on when I was like 22, I'm like, mm, I don't like this. I can't wait to own a house. And not too many 21, 22 year olds are thinking about that. So they're like, okay. So um, I started educating myself. Now, by that time, my mother was done with real estate at the whole 2008, 2009 market crash. My mom was like, this is too crazy. I'm out of it. So I started educating myself. I started taking first time home buyer classes and, um, like building up the credit history and all of that. Cause you know, when you're so young, you don't really have too much credit history. Um, so by 25, I was in a position to buy. So I bought my first home at 25 and um, I kind of orchestrated the whole transaction, which was funny. I didn't know what I was doing, but I just, I kind of did though naturally. Um, and then <laughs> super intrigued. I just kept looking, even after closing on my first house, I kept looking every single day as new houses hit the market and everyone kind of laughs like, why are you still looking the minute a new house goes on the market? You found your house. But I was just super intrigued. Um, and then I educated myself on like the capital gains tax rule. But I knew my first house was just a stepping stool. It wasn't my forever house. Um, so I educated myself on the capital gains tax rule, you know, living there two out of the five recent years owner occupy and you can profit tax free so I'm like oh my gosh I'm so I I was there about three years in my first house and I did minimal updates nothing crazy my basement was a semi-finished I finished it um sold it made a crazy profit um and then I paid you know debts off bought another house which is where I'm currently at now I have my first investment property so it just opened my eyes and it's like, wow, real estate can really change someone's life. Um, so at yeah. that moment, I knew I wanted to jump in real estate. I just didn't have the time. You know, I'm a mom. I was working another full time job. Um, so when COVID hit and we were all on quarantine, I found it was a perfect time to jump into real estate. So that's when I did it. Um, and I got um, licensed. I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Not, not to interrupt, but I just wanted to, before I lose the thread, um, 
I picked up on something. You have a, a lot of passion for real estate coming into mm -hmm. it. I heard you say like, you know, you're always looking at houses. You're really inter yeah. you were really interested and passionate. That passion can really drive so much, right? Oh, like people who just get into it, you know, for the money and they don't really mm -hmm. care about it. It's hard to, it's hard to be that successful. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I have a lot of a lot of passion for it, and I genuinely like to help people. Um, I knew from very early on oh, I yeah. wanted to be in the field of contribution helping. Um, that's what I actually have a bachelor's degree in human services. Prior to real estate, that was at Hennepin County in their health and human service division, helping people. Um, so in real estate, I'm still helping people, just in a different capacity. Um, yeah, absolutely, that's so cool. I didn't know that. Definitely. Yep. So. Um, so yeah, I got licensed in June of 2021. If you guys remember, that was an insane time in the market. People were waiting <laughs> almost every contingency. They were going almost 100K over asking price, offering appraisal gap coverage. So looking back, it's just amazing. Like, how did I find success that quick in such an insane market? Um, but if, again- if anybody hasn't gone- yeah, if anyone didn't go through that market, the biggest challenge was just getting your buyer's offers accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You needed you needed ma massive skill, tenacity, and patience. Definitely. It was insane. Um, so yeah, I got licensed and I'm just grateful I took the day that I got licensed, I had like pre-approved buyers ready to go. And I think what um a lot of new agents is hard to gain trust because people, I mean, you're new, you know, people think, well, you don't really know what you're doing. They kind of want to give you a shot, but I'm grateful that a lot of people trusted me right out the gate. I have some clients who trusted me more than I trusted myself. They believed in me, but um, I've, I think it's helped because I've always was so open with my journey, even from, like I said, starting when I was like 21 or 22, I'm like, I'm going to buy a house, you guys. I'm working on building up my credit. And when I sold that house, I was very open with my journey. Um, I try to be an open book to educate and help others. So I think a lot of people understand my heart is is truly genuine. I do love to help people and I am very passionate about it. Um, I was open with my journey. So a lot of people instantly trusted me the day that I got licensed, which I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. so. so do you think they trusted you? They trusted you because you're, you're, you're open and they know <laughs> that you, you come with, you come from contribution and from ed educating too. You know, that automatically you don't come across like I'm, I'm trying to sell you anything. I'm it, here to help it, you. Definitely. Definitely. Yep. Cool. And that's genuine. That's and how I show up on social media is how I've always showed up on social media. You know, it's not one thing that just appeared out the blue. Like I've always, um, I've never been a gatekeeper on information. You know, I always love to share gems with others. Um, so I think that helped. And I mean, people know my mom was in real estate growing up. Um, again, I bought my house so young. Um, so a lot of people, they didn't really look at me entirely new like yes I was a new agent but I'm they're like okay she, she's been doing this you know she had her first house she got another house she's working on getting another house now so they know I come with some background you know yeah yeah, yeah absolutely and I think also uh -huh. with real estate some things it's, it's just a natural skill I think some things can't be taught or bought you know of course a lot of things um you know with real estate in any profession you you Things have to be taught to you, right? But some things just naturally, like I always come up with creative offer add-ons, which like you said, in 2021, when I first started, you needed that. You needed to go the extra mile and do something that not a lot of agents are doing um, and just truly go that extra mile, which I'm always willing to do for all my clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and people people pick up on that. They know They know that that's who you are. And mm -hmm. so that's, they know that that's what they're going to get from you in real estate. Definitely. So I'm picking up another, another theme of kind of like consistency mm -hmm. in how you show up when you have certain skills in, in one area and people know you for that, or they know how you show up doing this. And then they, they know when you get into real estate, you're going to show up similarly, or yep. that's what they're, that's their assumption, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, you said another thing that I wanted to pick up on too, which is, um, you're strategic about how you use social media. I've seen it. Yep. I've seen your social media feed. And uh, this is something I always try to tell new agents. We, we try to tell new agents is um, the way you use social media in the past 
um, may not be, well, it may, may not or is probably not the way you want to use it in real estate to build a real estate business. Absolutely. Like if you, if you were using it to, you know, complain about things or rant about stuff or I don't know, whatever it is, um, yeah. you, might, you might need to find another, another channel for that and cultivate your social media presence around your real estate business. Absolutely. I'm glad you bring that up because in any profession, whether you're doing hair or nails or real estate or, or whatever, it's, it's a digital business card, essentially. You know, when we want to work with someone um, or get to know someone, we're all going to their social media, just scoping them out at first. Yeah. And it could yeah. be one post that could like, mm, you know what, I don't want to work with them based off, like you said, if they're ranting or um, just not holding a certain level of professionalism, like how I show up on social media is genuinely how I've always been. But when I started real estate, I just started a whole new Facebook page because um, I've always been like an authentic, genuine person. But it's like people don't need to see me when I was 21 partying or, you know, you just want to hold <laughs> a certain level of professionalism. Um, Cause like I said, all it takes is one post. You know, I try to leave politics out of things. Um, if I'm frustrated, yeah. I don't run to social media um, and to down others. I always show other agents support. I don't look at any other agent as competition. I always look at as collaboration. I'm always uplifting other agents, sharing their information. Um, so yeah, it, it, that goes a long way. It truly goes a long way. Social media is, it's it's a digital business card and people need to be very diligent um, when they're at, doing their social media. Um, and it needs to be more authentic. You know, it doesn't need to just be, oh, buy or sell with me. Share journeys. Um, talk about um, yes. how you yes. overcame diversity. Um, talk about how you help your clients. Just share personal People want to see that. They want to see the real you again. No one wants to feel like they're being sold on something. So, well, you hit another point too. Uh, you you've got a great story, and you're at Realty Group. Yep. Correct. Yep. And Long, you know, Long Done has a has a great story and background. Sherilyn, I mean, we all do. We all do, right? And and yep. and in our all in our own very unique ways. And people want to know that. Yep. Um, they, they want you to, I think, especially nowadays, people want to know who they're doing business with. That doesn't mean you have to have no boundaries and put your whole life out there. In fact, you shouldn't, I don't think. But yeah. um, but don't be afraid to like share your, your journey, mm -hmm. especially as it pertains to real estate and home buying and finances and all that kind of stuff, because people, um, people love to hear that and Absolutely. it inspires them. Absolutely. It definitely does. I, I couldn't agree more. And yeah, my, uh, both Mike and Long, they have just phenomenal um, stories. That's actually one of the reasons why I joined RG. I mean, a number of other things, but like their RG slogan is like real people, real results. And they truly are like both of like nothing was handed to them. They worked so hard to get to where they're at. And, and, I, and I like that. Um, so yeah, everyone's yeah. journey is so important. And I always tell people like share it, like have that right there can have a buyer or a seller pick you versus over an other agent. Like, wow, their story is just incredible. They appreciate the grind, the dedication, the hard work. Um, so yeah, I, I try to be a open book on my real estate journey for my clients um, and how I kind of came into the real estate journey too. So. And, and what the day to day life of real estate is like too. People, people want to know that I found when, when we put up posts about like, uh, how many showings we're doing or yep. um, what, whatever. It doesn't have to be anything big, right? But I notice you put up things about just kind of like, you know, the selfie in the car and it, it's, yep. you don't even have to say anything. You're just, I'm out, I'm out working, you know, yep. and people see that and their, and their, their messages, even if you just spent the day um, goofing off, which you probably didn't, <laughs> the message to people is Danielle is working really hard all the time in yep. real estate. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. Cause every yeah. day, and I'm sure you can attest to this too, that it's something different. You know, you may wake up and have to do a bunch of showings or maybe you're knocking out some CE credits or you're at meetings or listing appointments or it's no day is the same. And I think that's one thing that I really love about real estate. You'll never know what yeah. is on your schedule. So I love yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Can, can you talk to us a little bit more about how you um, how you lead generate, how you find clients? I mean, we've hit on some themes already, but yeah. I think when uh, people get into the business, 
um, of course, that's the biggest um, that's the biggest challenge. And one of my lectures to, to new agents is um, there's two ways to get leads. You can buy them yep. or you can learn how to lead generate. And I think also with lead generation, there's prospecting and mar marketing, right? So there's yep. directly going after people um, in the sense of you reaching out all the time. Um, but there's also attracting. And I think uh, that's the mark. That's the marketing side of it. Yeah, and marketing exactly. doesn't have to be expensive. That doesn't mean you have to buy billboards and spend a lot of money. It's more just about how to attract people. Mm -hmm. And I suspect you're good at both. But can you tell can you tell us a bit more about how like where your business comes from and how you how you get the leads in the door? Yep, that's a great question. So I have lots of agents reach out to me and ask that exact same question. I almost feel bad because I feel that they think I'm not being truthful, but I don't <laughs> pay for any leads. I really, business, it attracts, which I'm so grateful for and I'm very humble for. Um, every single day people are reaching out to me, whether it's on, I would say Facebook is my biggest um, generator. Um but yeah, people just reach out to me. I've never had to door knock, pay for a lead, which, you know, no shade to people who do. People get business how they, no. you know, get business. Um, but it's I'm, not, it's... I'm not putting that down, by the way, for anybody oh, who, yeah. who's doing those. It's just exactly. Different, you know, different things work different, for different exactly. people. Um, but yeah, business just comes to me. Um, and again, I pay all of that to, I think, how I've always showed up. Um, and just genuinely who I am, you know, I feel um, buying a house is so personable, you know, um, for one, it, it's where you raise your children, your family, um, we, we kind of know a lot of people's personal business, you know, how much they can go, maybe they had a bankruptcy, for an example, and they can only go the FHA route, you know, um, maybe they're, they're getting divorced, or, you know, very personable things, Um so people really look at someone's integrity in their heart and what type of person they are. So um, yeah. again, people just feel comfortable. Um, again, I've shared that journey. Um, and yeah, people just reach out to me, which I'm very, very grateful for. So yeah, I really don't do much um, lead prospecting. Um, it just comes to me. So I'm very grateful for that. It's, it's, all, it's all really attraction based. Yep, attraction. Based. Of it. Yep. And and but 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 um, you have to be out there. Like you're posting on social media yep. all, all every day, maybe yep. multiple times a day, and so Absolutely. people are seeing your feed all the time. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you have to be strategic. Like with any, there's always algorithms to things, right? There's algorithms to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. So you do have to be strategic with it. Like everything I post, I strategically have it public, right? Because I want anybody to see my, whether you're my Facebook friend or not, I want you to see it. Um, you Absolutely. always want it shareable because you want people to share your post. Um, you always want to respond or at least if someone's like, oh, congratulations, go back and personally like their comment or respond to it because every time you do it, it's going to keep showing up and showing up. That's how the algorithm works. Post multiple times a day so it can always be showing up. And you do that. I do do that strategically. So I guess that is a part of my marketing um, and prospecting because I want when people hear real estate, I want them to instantly think of me. They don't have to choose me, but I want them to at least think of me. You know what I mean? You have to be very strategic. There are some people that if people aren't constantly in your face, they'll like pick an agent and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot you were an agent because they don't see it enough. You know what I mean? We call them ghost agents where people have their license, but they don't do too much business. And that's fine. That may not be their goal, but they miss out on business. A buyer or seller would totally come to them, but they forgot they were even in business, you know? Um, yeah, one of the things I, I like, so I have a marketing background, Sherilyn and I do, and I, um, one of the things I learned in brand uh, marketing was that uh, the public or just people in general can only typically um, typically remember about three brands in a category, yep. like top yep. of mind. So there's Coke, there's Pepsi, and then RC right. Cola. I mean, yep. you know what? I, you know, so, um, so it's very much the same in real estate. And that's why you're doing a great job of like, um, you know, just reminding people that you're there and that you're in real estate. Yeah. Without, and you're not, and it's not like, um, it's not like a, you know, salesy or obnoxious or anything mm -hmm. like that. Like 
calling people all the time and bothering them. It's just mm -hmm. you show up in their feed because you're on you're you're commenting, you're responding to people, and so the you're you're just using the algorithm organically. Exactly, absolutely, and you make a really good point. I didn't think about it. Like, um, you're right. Like, off certain things just pop in your head. Like, whether it be car models, um, soda models, yeah. real estate. Like, it's certain things yeah. are instantly going to pop in people's head, you know, and you're right with real estate. It's like, everyone should be thriving to be like, when this person thinks of real estate, boom, they think of me one out of the two or three, you know? So, um, that's a really good analogy. It, it happened to, yeah. And it happened to us when we were getting started where, you know, you tell everybody you're in real estate, your neighbors, your friends, family, whatever. Um, and then you think, um, or at least I, maybe I thought, you know, the job's done, right? Yep. Like they all know. <laughs> and then you'll find somebody sold their house and then they'll see you and they'll be like, oh, my God, I completely forgot you're in real estate. Exactly. Oh, shoot. I would have called you. you know? <laughs> yep, exactly. exactly. And I think social media is so, so big right now. Like I tell everyone to just fire away at social media. And it almost like you have to think like think when my mom was in real estate in like the early 90s, you kind of did have to pay for mailers and do the flyers and door knocking. But now we are in front of those people's faces essentially every single day. You know what I mean? Um, so I think it's a great tool. People really need to like utilize it well. And that's one of the things that I want to, um, I feel I'm really good at it, but I really only show up. Um, I mean, I have just Instagram and Facebook, um, but TikTok is making its wave. It's making a huge wave. And at first I thought that it was just for young kids, you know, like my son who's almost 13 is on TikTok. So I was like, I'm not getting on TikTok. But now people are like, no, they have like recipes. And um, I have someone on my team who gets a lot of business from Snapchat. I'm like, no way, really Snapchat? So um, just as technology advances, we have to advance and evolve as well. So I wanted to start tapping into um, at least TikTok for sure. I don't know about Snapchat, but for sure TikTok and just be open to adapt and learn because um, things are forever changing. Technology is forever evolving. Yeah. Are you using TikTok? No, I'm not. No, but I need to. I mean, yeah. everyone's like, you need to get out there. It's so amazing. Um, and like well, I, I started. Hmm. Yeah, I started using it a bit and then I kind of I kind of fell off the wagon with it. Um, but I think what I learned from it personally was that um, at least I know how, like I know this sounds kind of pathetic, but at least I know how to use it. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think like what you hit the nail, you hit the nail on the head that um, so I'm thinking about our kids too. like our kids are on um, TikTok, the older kids, yeah. and um, they don't really even like Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so the generation that's coming up now in a, in a few years when they start buying houses yep. that's going to be their, their world or maybe something new and so at the very least we have to do what you said and be very adaptable and not just say ah, you know i'm not forget mm -hmm. it no way I, i've heard realtors say that i'm not, no way i'm using tiktok it's yeah. it's just stupid well mm -hmm. That'd be like, you know, to use your mom as an analogy that it's kind of like being in the 90s or 80s yep. and saying, you know, the phone book, the newspaper um, mm -hmm. and, and postcards are stupid. Right. That's exactly. how you reach the public. Now this yep. is how you reach the public. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love I love that. I love where you where you can come from that. I, it's, it's crystal clear why you're getting clients because of the things that you're doing and the yeah. attitude that you have. Thank you. Uh, can you tell me a little bit, and maybe this isn't a thing for you because you maybe you have a lot of um, people who are just assuming to work with you. Um, we call them come list me's or, you know, <laughs> um, buyers who are already, you know, uh, already wanting to work with you. Um, but uh, lead con lead conversion and follow up. Maybe <laughs> we could talk about that. Do you have people, I'm sure you do have people who are higher up the funnel in the sense of they're working on credit, down payment, they're, yep. they're not ready, they have a lease for a year. Yep. Um, how do you stay in touch with people and get those leads um, to the closing table? Absolutely. Great question. So like I said, I have people reach out to me literally every single day in various forms. Sometimes I'll just check my email and it's a person who emailed me or sent me um an inbox message on Facebook or Instagram and all of some are ready to go and some they need a little bit of work. So um, what I do is I send them to some of my preferred lenders or any lender. I always let all my clients know they're free to work with whoever they want. 
However, I do have, you know, some preferred people. And um, I said, to be honest, we've got to get a clear picture of your credit income finances to see where we're at. And then the lenders that I partnered up with, they're really, really good. They have score stimulators so they can play around with different scenarios. Like if you pay this credit card off to this exact dollar amount or pay this bill or you know what, that on your credit is one year away from falling off. Don't even bother paying that, um, which is surprising to some clients because they're like, really, why wouldn't I pay that? But it's true. Like sometimes it can actually do more damage to your credit than good. Yes. So they're, they have a clear game plan, which is again, one of the reason why I picked the preferred lenders, um, cause they either can issue a pre-approval or they say, do certain things. They're never just like, Oh, you're not ready to go. Sorry. They're given a clear game plan. So then I just do standard follow-up. You know, I don't want to, I, again, I treat my clients how I like to be treated. I don't like salesy or too pushy. I just set follow-ups like, okay, I'm going to follow up with you in one month or two months or three months or however long. And then in between that, it's good because I usually friend all my clients on Facebook. So I'm again, we're constantly, you know, seeing one another. So that's, I, I, I love it, you know? Um, and then I, I just, everything that I do is organic. It's so crazy when I tell people this, but I don't even use a CRM system. <laughs> um, I trust yeah. me, I need to like that so bad that I don't. Um, but again, I just, I don't know. I do everything organic. So like when I'm really reaching out to my clients, like, oh, happy birthday or happy Father's Day or Mother's Day, that's really me. It's not like a system reminding me. Um, and I, I just want to find that right CRM system because there's so much out there. Um, and I just want to find the right one. But yeah, it's all organic. I'm a big note taker and I live by my calendar and I just put in dates for follow up. And I always tell my clients like, Literally any question, feel free to text me or call me. Um, and they do. So it's I've had really good working relationships with all of my clients. Again, it's been so just laid back and organic. Yeah, we didn't use a CRM system for a while too. Uh, probably a couple of years until Nora rescued us. <laughs> no, no, we, we use follow up boss now. So. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm follow up boss a little bit. I haven't plugged in all my contacts. Um, I, I really need to, but again, I'm still kind of a newbie fi figuring things out, but yeah, everything I do but, is just super organic and laid back. But it's more important to, here's a good message too. It's more important to do that than to, um, worry too much about your tech setup and all that stuff when you get started. It, yep. Exactly. When you have the business, you can fix the problems. If, if things start turning into, right. It, Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that I've ever like, of course, I want to run a business, but I also I don't ever want my clients to feel like, oh, this is just automated or this is just systematic. You know what I mean? I want them to know, like, it's really me. Like, I'm really there helping you in every step of the way. Um, sometimes when you're conducting business, it feels too automated in a sense. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, sure. And you kind of miss that sure. up personalized things like um but I know to take my business to the next level I'm gonna have to do that I just have to again it's all growing pains and learning and figuring things out yeah yep absolutely uh Chris uh, is wondering how much of your business is referrals how how do you ask for referrals a lot of referrals just come to me I would say so far I'm almost at my 60th transaction mark in two years, which is insane. I still can't believe it. And I'm so grateful. I would say out of that, I would say about 30%. I People just clients or even coworkers or friends or family, they're like, I'm not in a position to buy right now, but um, they have a coworker or a friend or family. So I would say about 30%, my sphere, they uh, okay. send me referrals. So very grateful for that. Yeah, very cool. So um, you're, you're getting a lot of organic referrals mm -hmm. just by doing a good job yeah, yep. and building up a client base. Yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, oh, sorry, there are questions. I have my own. Yeah. Um, Brittany is wondering, are you open to me any mentorship? Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, you seem very willing to share share what you know. 
And I very much, you know, Sherilyn and I and very much follow that philosophy too. Um, yeah, it, if there's anything anyone wants to know about how we do things, I'll, I'll tell you. Definitely. I'm the same way. And I'm a big believer that literally what you put into the world, you get back right out of the world. Um, pay it forward. Definitely pay it forward. And um, yeah, like I'm, I've never been a gatekeeper on information. Like I've, um, I once had a friend, it was so funny. This was literally maybe just about two months ago. He was like, congratulations, you got that offer accepted. I put that offer for one of my clients too. If you don't mind me asking, what'd you put? And it's funny because he put in an offer $10,000 higher than me, but my client got the offer and I told him like, but he had a longer inspection period. I put a one day inspection period. He put five days. And um, I'm like, yeah, you like Marigold inspections. They're awesome. They can usually get out there same day. Um, so just sharing gems or just like, you know, with our FHA buyers, it's really hard. Maybe put in there, you know, in the event that FHA calls it out, we'll reimburse the sellers up to $500 or, you know what, we'll go over there and do it ourselves if it's average to be less than two hours of work. And he's like, oh my gosh, I would have never thought to do that. Thank you. On one hand, someone could be like, why are you giving your little tools away in, in your, to how you win offers? But the way I look at it, that good deed will find its way back to me. So um, I'm always yeah. more than willing to help and just little gems that I've came across that helped me, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, I think I think you and I met, I think you knew Sherilyn previously, but I think you yeah. and I met because we were showing a buyer a house and um, we were at the showing together, kind of yeah. overlapping. Yeah. And um, I think you just, I don't know what we said or, or we, what you picked up on, but um, you were, I think you said something like, you know, if this one doesn't work out, I've got an off-market listing, yeah. you know, coming up that's, that's uh, pot a potential possibility. Definitely. So it's just, it's just really cool to, um, you know, when we are working with agents who can um, just, just share, share what we have and uh, try to help people get in houses. Absolutely. I, I agree so much. And I'm always big for like, I tell, um, and if some, everyone can do, you know, they run their own real estate business how they want, but I'm big on collaborations. I want to see other agents win. I don't care what brokerage they're on, what team they're on. I want us all to win. So if there's just like how it lined out for us, if I'm, I always ask like, Hey, what do you have coming? Or what do you have off market? Because, Hey, I might just have a buyer for it or a seller or, um, so I'm always big on just kind of letting, and I always ask my, my clients too, like who want me to list their home. Are you open for me marketing this off market? Um, cause again, that can help someone just like it helped our mutual client. Like you don't have to deal with the bidding or you don't have to deal with the pressure of having a wave inspection or doing appraisal gap gap coverage like that can be really intimidating to some buyers and I've talked to a lot of clients who have like I've put on buying a home for so long because they're like I'm not doing the bidding war thing I'm not waiving inspection they just get so overwhelmed um so having an off market is just a true blessing to some clients yeah absolutely absolutely and there's some rules about how we need to handle that but um yeah. but it can work out really really great Absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, when we got into the business, somebody, you know, gave us probably more than one experienced agent said, try to, you know, try to work in higher price points mm -hmm. um, or certain neighborhoods or whatever. Is your business localized in certain, because I, I get the impression you're, you're more like us in the sense that your buyers are kind of, kind of all over and all price over points might be all, all over. Uh and I'm so grateful. I've done, wow, all over Malacca, Minnesota. Um, really? <laughs> Malacca to, um, I'm helping a friend right now in Rochester um, from mm -hmm. St. Paul, Minneapolis, um, Shoreview, Robbinsdale, um, literally all, all over the metro area, um, Burnsville, Egan, um, Andover, Hoon Rapids, St. Cloud. I'm, I'm literally all over, which I love. Like, again, I've only been licensed two years and I'm just so grateful. Um, Lakeville, 
I've done single family, multifamily, fourplex, condo. So I've learned a lot in every transaction. You truly do get smarter and smarter. I've done flips. I've done home partners of America. Um, I've done so much and I'm just so grateful because it helps me become a better agent for my next clients to come. It's like, oh yeah, I know about Home Partners of America, or I know about the CIC and the 10 day right of recession period with condos. Um, I've done new construction. Um, I've helped with rehabs. I mean, I've done a lot in two years, which I'm really, really grateful for. Yeah. And see that where I'm going with this too, um, this doesn't surprise me a bit, but when you're getting started, when you're getting into the business, um, I thought it was I thought it was bad, potentially bad advice that I got. Not to criticize anybody who specializes in a neighborhood, but that can take a long time to build yep. up. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the things I, I like new agents to understand too is go where the business is. Don't be afraid to drive. Yep. Don't say, "Well, I'm on the west side, or I am. I don't want to do the east an east side buyer. I'll have to just just go where the business is." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And someone might, I'm, I'm on a team. I'm on the elite agency team. My team lead Jado made a really good point. Um, of course, again, people have to structure their business how, but never be so like where you lose business. Like, oh, I don't work in that area. Maybe try this or that, or I'm going to have someone else help you. Because studies have shown on average one client, you, if you keep a good relationship, you can over their lifetime sell about three houses on average with one buyer, right? Because you think about their first home, like me, for an example, I've lived there a couple years. Um, studies show, you know, first time buyers only stay there a max of seven years usually, right? And then they move on to their secondary home where they may be at for a long period of time to raise their children. And then their home, their empty nester or their like retirement home. Um, and then one client on average gives you what for referrals. So, um, you know, you don't yeah. ever want clients and you can always be strategic. Like I recently did a transaction in Springfield, Minnesota. A lot of people didn't even know there's a Springfield, Minnesota. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I did a lot of showings on this particular day. I couldn't show my buyer. So I reached out to the listing agent like, hey, if I Venmo you 50 bucks, would you be open to showing that listing? I mean, it's their listing. They want to get the property sold too. She's like, yeah, totally. No problem. So even if there is a property, of course, you know, still be there during inspection and final walkthrough, but always work with that other listing agent too. I've had a lot of good experiences where even if it's out of the way a little bit, they're more than happy to show it to them. Of course, just Venmo them as a thank you for their time. But um, yeah, I don't pass any type of business down, you know, unless it's way, way on the Canadian border or something that would kind of be hard for me to tackle. But then I just reach out to agents um, and just figure out some sort of, um, you know, kind of referral fee or something. But yeah, I'm pretty much wherever a client wants to go, I'm willing to help them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, does anyone have any, um, any, any other questions? Any, a few things in the chat, but we answered, we answered those. Feel free to speak up too, if anyone has any Anything you're wondering about? Um, anyone at all? <laughs> well, while you think about it, um, let's see, in our remaining minutes here, um, what else can we talk about? Well, I, is, there I any, ask, is there anything? Go, go ahead, Nora. Well, I was going to say, Danielle, what's your number one tip for? for new agents getting into the business or agents that have been in the business for a little bit, but feel like they could be doing more or reaching more people. So I would say a lot of agents do reach out to me and they struggle with like lead generation. Um, So for me, and there's a, do you ever take your kids to showings or I don't see where the, I'm on my phone, you guys, my laptop always asks up. So I wasn't even going to chance it. Um, I could, so part of the question cut off, but yeah, I do take my kiddos, um, with me. And so I tell all my clients to bring their kiddos with, you know, I have two kids, a little daughter who's six. She loves it. She's like a realtor diva in the making. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> but my son is almost 13. He doesn't go, but I always keep it open and laid back. Like if you guys want to bring your kids, totally bring them with. Um, so yes, I do. But back to your question, Nora. Um, a lot of, again, I've been very, very blessed and grateful that, you know, I attract business, but that's actually, it's, 
not too common for it to happen that way. So I always tell new agents, because in the business, usually you have to work for the business. No one just, oh, here's a pile of leads or here's a pile of clients. You have to kind of work for it. But there are teams out there who are heavy on leads. Um, so I tell people, you know, if they need that, then really find a good team who gives that. Um, Cause that's a lot of people who reach out to me. They just like, I can't find any business or leads that I do get. They're just kind of not ready. They're, you know, so I would say just teaming up with a good team who can help them with lead generation. And they just yeah, have to. We're learning, or, or learning how to, how to lead, gen, sharpening lead generation skills Definitely. too can help Absolutely. with that too. I know, like I said, yeah. I feel so bad because people reach out to me and I unfortunately, I'm not an expert at that lead generation. I'm not, I'll be the first to admit because again, I attract business. Um, but yeah, I think that would be a, a, a good class for you guys to do um, good ways to lead generate solid leads too. Because a lot of agents reach out to me and they're like, yeah, I'm lead generation, but I'm calling people their disconnected phone numbers or someone's like, huh, how the hell did you get my number? You know, they're just not solid yeah. leads. A lot of people that I talk to, they're like, how do I lead gen? And again, there's no point in lead generation if they're just flimsy leads or something, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, I would even be interested in that. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for the business now that I attract, but I don't know a year from now I could hit a dead end. And then I'd be like, how do I effectively lead generate? So. Yeah. Those are skills we always want to stay sharp on because mm -hmm. things can change in the economy too. Exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and you, you'll find that as you're in this business longer, what worked right now might not work in a couple of years this, or it may not work the same. Like, yep. you know, the, the people that are coming to you might, it, the dynamics might change. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Uh, Tara's wondering any challenge you overcame that would be uh, a, uh, a helpful tip to newbies. Um, hey, was there anything you were struggling with in the, in the, in the past couple of years, logistics, family, um, talking to clients um uh we and i think this kind of dovetails with marissa's question too i'm really curious about getting um to that very first client imposter syndrome is heavy at the hey we all have imposter syndrome <laughs> a little bit first i just want to tell you marissa you know so definitely the, we all the, the scale of this changes as you get like can i handle the first client now can i handle five clients at a time can i handle building a team having employees, whatever it is that, that never really changes. So, <laughs> but, um, I, but please, yeah, I would say always have a mentor to any capacity, whether, um, like I have a mentor, I think everyone and mentors deserve a mentor. Um, Marissa or anyone on here, if you guys text me, my number's plastered all over social media. I'm a night owl. So I don't care if it's 2am, if I'm up, I'll respond just to even <laughs> is off. Like, Hey, I'm going to submit an offer. Is there any, strategic offer add-on you think um, that could help me win seal the deal and if I have an idea I'll be happy to share it always have um yes um always have a mentor everyone needs a mentor and always be confident in yourself um because our clients are relying on us if we're not confident then they're not going to be confident in us don't let anyone like I've of course ran into agents who I've Throughout these past two years, I've never ran into like a jerk agent, which everyone's like, are you serious? I have ran into a ton of those. Everyone I've worked with have been really, really nice. But you have ran into some like, I've been doing real estate since before you were born. It's like, okay, that's great. You know, um, always just be confident in yourself. Um, yeah, just don't let anyone kind of make you feel bad because you're a new agent and you don't know what you're doing because you absolutely do. So um, don't be scared it's, to ask help and don't be scared to say, you know what, I don't know, but I'm going to find out, hang tight. Like, don't ever feel scared. I think some new agents are afraid to say that because, again, they don't want to come off as a traditional new agent. But it's OK to ask. I think our clients appreciate that even more, that we are going to seek upper advice. So. Yeah, you don't even have to say I don't know. You can just say I'll um, if you don't want to. Although I don't think there's any reason, any problem with that um, either. But you can always just say um, I'll. Um, I'm going to get right back to you on that, and then yep. call your coach, mentor, whoever. Yep. Call. By the way, I, you can call me too. If you don't have to be on the Vaz Harwood team, if you want to call me for advice or something too, feel free. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. I'll put that up there too. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And we're maybe, always maybe not maybe not 2 a.m. <laughs> I won't I won't match you on the 2 a.m. But <laughs> Even some in, in real estate, there's something new. Like I've ran into so many people who's been doing in the real estate field for 20 years and they're like, gosh, I don't know. So no question is a dumb question. We're all going to run into situations where we genuinely don't know. And it's sometimes it takes a number of agents to collaborate together and figure out the right solution. So um, I would say yeah, always, that's right. always, um, I think one of the things that if, if always be on it, because like when you see a house and your client loves it, call that agent, fill out that feedback right away. Um, I think no response is a response. You know, like I've been on the listing side where I'll just get an offer and it's like, oh, this is strange. The agent didn't fill out feedback. The agent didn't call me or text me. So right there, I inadvertently have look at that agent in a negative light. Uh, sadly, because their offer may be great, but it's still like that agent is not doing their due diligence. So when your client sees a house, um, just really go to bat for them right away. Again, like I said, fill out that feedback, let them know they're interested, call that agent. Um, always ask open-ended questions like, hey, I just got done showing your house. My client really loves it. Is there anything specific that your sellers want to see in this offer? Is there a specific closing date? Have they found their next house already? Would they be interested in a rent back? Um, and then just really sell your client. Like, look, my clients is a step further than just pre-approved. They're underwritten approved. They're with my preferred lender. They're ready to go. I will do everything in my power to ensure a smooth transaction. You really want to put that listing agent on ease and just go to bat for your clients. Um, because again, vibes are everything. They can pick your offer like, you know what, this agent's on it. This other agent I got or this other offer I got, yeah, it might be five grand higher, but I cannot get a hold of this agent, you know? So um, little things like that make the world of a difference. So it's not just how you treat your clients that matters. It's how you show up professionally and treat other agents and, and communicate and all of that kind of thing. And guaranteed, you're getting more offers accepted for the your, the clients that you have because of that, because of how you're 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 interfacing pr professionally with the co-op agent or Absolutely. potential co-op agent, and then uh, having more success for the clients. The clients are happier, and they're you're going to get more referrals that way too. Absolutely, and I always joke around. I say I'm so happy I started real estate when it was like more of a collaboration because my mom was like back when real estate was brutal it was like two attorneys like fighting for the buyer and seller they were <laughs> and I couldn't work in that atmosphere like although yes the listing agents representing the seller for an example and although I'm representing the buyer agent we're both looking out for our clients best interest but we're also working together you know it's not me against you we have a common goal here to get this house sold, have our clients both in good position. So I truly do come from a place of collaboration. I don't look at anyone as competition. And I think that helps too. Um, and just overall, yeah. being nice goes a long way. You know, you, we all come across agents who are just not the greatest attitude or just look at it. Is it me against you? And it's like, it's, I don't operate like that. So um, I just put yeah. it out, put into the world and it find its way back to me, just like it'll find its way back to anyone. Yeah. Well, great. I think we could, we can wrap it up. Um, but uh, unless you have anything else uh, or if anyone has any other questions, speak now. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll probably sign off here. Um, but I wanted to say how grateful I am to, uh, to you for coming on. And it's... Uh, you're definitely inspiring and um, I'm excited to see what you do in the next couple of years and beyond. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And thank you guys for watching and the yeah. kind work. Appreciate it. Yep. Yep. And